Hi, this is Seth from Coming Out Tarot, and uh, I do classes over on Patreon. My whole goal in doing classes over there is to be able to talk about what is most important to you. And what I'm going to share is some of the stuff that I've been talking to people about and, and uh, teaching. So in this in this first little bit, and you can see lots in this tarot every day and, and experiencing what it is that uh, I've shared with tarot, probably in more formal fashion, but I want to do something a little more informal, which is what you might feel if you're over on Patreon slash coming out tarot. So first, I want to talk about the deck structure. For those of you who are just getting started, and I get asked a lot from people, how do I get started? Like, well, you just do, uh, and you start with whatever's most important to you. I think there's lots of ways into tarot, and not everybody's way is the way that's best for you. Sometimes you want to dig in and read. Sometimes you just want to experience throwing out the cards. Sometimes you want to read book after book after book. Sometimes you want to go to teachers and explore what the teacher has to say. In all things, everything you're experiencing, that you're reading, that you are hearing, and that you are getting coached on is from someone else's lived experience. There is no right or wrong. There is no tried and true. There is no, this is the way it always has ever been. If somebody tells you this is the way it always is and will ever be, you're in the wrong spot. I guarantee you uh, <laughs> it's because tarot is going to change with you as you grow and experience tarot. So it's never always going to be anything. What I would share, because I get a lot of questions in the shop I work at, is what's the difference between tarot and oracle? And that's part of why I want to talk about the structure. Tarot has a very specific structure. It is organized in a certain way. It is has not always been organized that way. So the way it's organized today is the way it's organized today. It may be different a hundred years from now. You never know. Uh, but the way it started is not the way it's organized today. So we're going to talk about the organization of it. But in comparison to Oracle, Oracle has individual organization by each deck. Oracle can have one card, it can have 36 cards, it can have 84 cards, it can have 136. It, it just depends on the author and the creator of that Oracle deck. So Oracle is not bound by a structure. Uh, Oracle can just be cards with paintings on it. Oracle can be cards with paintings and words. Uh, so when you get to tarot, today it has a very um, patterned structure. I organize it in, in four piles. Some people organize it in two. The simplest structure is major arcana, minor arcana. Major is cards 0 through 21, so there's in total 22 cards. And the minor arcana are four suits of um, 1 through 10 plus a knight queen and king depending on the deck you have that court system which is based in the european colonial idea may be different you might have uh, oh sorry there's a page knight queen and king you you may have like a, a son daughter father mother where you end up in a matriarchal deck that is based in a familial structure that is heteronormative and a bit nuclear and very um American expectations versus another culture, or uh, when we think about queer families, that ain't it. <laughs> that ain't it. So let's talk about the structure that exists today in a tarot deck, and I'll use the Rider Waite Smith because it's the one that most people have access to, or can, or, or will be taught from, uh, depending on the book or individual they're reading. So uh, I start with the Aces because the Aces are unique unto themselves. They're part of the minors, and they are the root of each of the suits. So they have an expression that is, uh, I think, overly dramatic. It is very dramatic about the intensity of a suit. So if we're talking about, where's the one I have in front? The wands. Um, our wands have an intensity of ideas flowing, coming, growing. It could be the, the very first spark of an idea that blossoms into, into like thousands of other ideas or creation. 
uh, the, the intensity of this is that moment that's almost indescribable. Similarly, um, cups, this is that first burst of love that happens or um, uh, the love not only of a person, but uh, a thing, the possibility of something, hope, spirituality, it's intense. So the aces are, are a lot and I, I like to keep think of them as their own group. Then we have the um, set of minors that exists in two through 10. Uh, the aces are included in the minors, but as a separate group, two through 10 then becomes uh, minors. And these are images you might be familiar with. The minors exist in our day to day, our everyday experiences, expressions. Um, when you see something like the eight of pentacles, this is going to work. This is doing the work. This is producing the work. This is uh, being involved in the work. <laughs> it, is, it is a day-to-day -day experience of knowing that uh, I've got a job to do. Then we have the court cards, which are those four in, in this deck, uh, page, knight, queen, and king. And uh, people struggle with these because they're they, they don't seem to be as clear as the minors, especially when you're looking at images. Uh, and you're not quite sure how to, you may have a lot of questions about the court cards, but they tend to represent people. They can represent places and things too, but they often represent people. And in, a, in our queer world, um, where we're reading about how this might represent a, um, like this, is the tall, dark, handsome stranger, which is, is very not only heteronormative, but um, white European culturally to expect that there's this tall, dark, handsome stranger, someone who's coming to not only sweep me off my feet, but um, not be of the cultural expectations that I have every day. And it'll be this torrid love affair and um, it'll be someone from another country, which is also very white centered. So when you're reading about these, I would look at them through the lens of culture and uh, gender because you can release a lot of what that is. This knight can be very much Brienne of Ta Tarth, am I saying that right, from um, uh, Game of Thrones. You know, this doesn't have to be a male figure falling, falling in love with uh, some uh, hapless woman. <laughs> which, which is not the world we live in. So the courts can have a lot of strength and power to them in representing people, um, places and things. We talk about that a lot in my classes about how to recognize places and things beyond just people and characteristics of people. And then we have the majors, which you'll be familiar with, starting with the fool, the zero, and eventually um, finding their way through to 21, which is uh, the world or the universe and then having it start all over again back at the Fool. Uh, the majors are our larger experiences in life, those things that are greater than ourselves often, don't have to be, um, but also uh, maybe spiritual journeys or huge life events, births, life, um, births, deaths, uh, buying a house, <laughs> lots of big things. If you heard that, that's my husband. Um, the, the other thing that's interesting about the majors is this was the original deck. The aces, the courts, the rest of the minors didn't exist as a part of tarot until much later. Uh, so this was the original deck. And for those of you who love a good um, shock and awe, the order in which they exist, someone said that's the order. It hasn't always existed. The numbers on these weren't on the original cards, that what we believe are the original cards. They didn't exist. So someone knew the order, someone assumed the order. Uh, the order was what worked for them. And then some white dude with money wrote down, because he had class and the ability to print, wrote down what the order is or should be. And when he wrote it down, that's what the order became. So, uh, as much as you exist in this order of the majors, it may not be the order that works for you. And you'll find that some there's still some contention in that in different deck styles. So that is the organization of the tarot uh, by number, if you value it, and by uh, group, 
which is a little bit different than how most people do, which is either just major, minor, or major, minor chords. I like to, to include the aces as their own thing. So I hope this is helpful in knowing how the deck is structured and how you might approach it, uh, especially as a queer person. You don't have to do it the way someone said you should. You can explore it in the way that works best for you. And that's the way that I love to do my classes is let's explore this in a way that works for you because your life experience is different than everyone else's. You are unique and singular unto yourself and you should approach tarot in the same way.